كل احد هنا في الـ في الاتنجيز they you have to pass by الـ station maybe عبد الرحمن is a photographer so هو فاضي فما ما عنده مشكله انه يشتغل الاكسترا شغله so he just will add عبد الرحمن الايميل contact info and you stick it احنا هنا ك creative morning احنا عباره عن حلقه وصل بين الشركه او البلاتفورم او وات ايفر مع الشخص اللي هو عنده التالنت هذه او عنده الخدمه هذه فاحنا وي جاست ونت ميك ات فور يو ايزير اوكي ذيس از اور سوشيال ميديا اكونت ان تويتر اند انستغرام اتس ريال اندر سكور سي ام اند يو كان يوز ذيس هاشتاج فور تو دايز ايفنت اوكي وي هاف انذر بارت كول 30 سكند تاتشز We're gonna have five people will take the mic. If you have any platform, if you have anything that you would love to announce, we're gonna take, uh, just raise your hand at the end of the uh, presentation. You can take up the stage and tell us about your, your thing. Okay, today's theme is research, November's theme. So it was cho chosen by Colin in uh, Germany. And today we're going to start like for an audience engagement as an it's restart. Can we restart the places and start the networking and asking these questions? It's a way of restart, just to restart your places and try to get to know the person next to you. Can we do this? Yeah, let's start. We have one minute and a half. You can ask this question to make it easier for you.
Okay, our speaker today is Miranda. She is that much special. Why? Uh, she is the first speaker who booked uh, Creative Mornings in Real before it got lunch. So she is that much special. She's a graphic designer, and uh, I believe her talk would be such an amazing talk today. So let's welcome Miranda. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for all for, for you all to be for being here. Um, and I'm very glad and excited to talk to you about my um, restart through my creative uh, experience and journey thus far. Um, but first, let me. Nila is a perfectionist. Nila is an E student. Nila is it's either Nila is either uh, it's black or white kind of person. Um, it, it, 
was very, I, most of the time I would be very frustrated and very um, angry, like, why am I not getting this? Um, it's as if I'm stuck with no direction. I produce work that has no meaning or intention, but I was just too afraid to let go of what I know and uh, start again. So I kept moving forward. Um, now, I want you all to put your creative hats on as I take you through uh, one, of the process, one of my early processes um, in this product. I'm asked to uh, come up with a business idea, design a brand identity that best represents it, and draft one is due next week. So I spent the first four days thinking of a business idea. Uh, thinking of a business idea. Two days until the project is due and I still have no idea. So panic mode was on. Uh, okay, I decided to do, uh, I decided it's a coffee shop and it serves Arabic coffee and cake cakes because it just feels right. Um, so I go on to Illustrator, which is the software we use to draw shapes. Oh, and it would have an Arabic name. Um, I go on, I mess up, I mess with my tools because I didn't know what to do. So six hours later and nothing. I go on to Google, I try to find inspirations. Uh, okay, I find a couple of things that I like. Uh, let's go back to Illustrator and The coffee shop is called Adela. I use the brush uh, tool to create half a dad. And then I put two dots to merge dad waqaf from Adela Mawa. And I probably just like the two dots, so I kept it. Um, and this was created for the purpose of this project only. And uh, now let's create a shape out of it. Let's rotate it left, or right. Let's rotate it left. Mm, I think I like it. Okay, now colors. I like maroon, I like blue. I think that's working. Let's move on to patterns to apply it to business cards and packages. Voila, I'm done. It's ready to be presented. Uh, do I like it? No. Was I happy with it? No. But it got me a B plus. And I put all nighters working on this, so I guess it's, it feels good to, to work hard. Um, now, so, so one uh, Ben, which was my professor in, uh, in grad school, sorry, in undergrad school, once told us that you spend so much time working on your project, uh, on your project. So if something's not working, just stop and start again. It will save you way more time and energy than keeping, like, keep working on the same thing, trying to fix it. And in my head, I'm like, what? Mafi, what? Are you, are you, are you serious? We all need to fix and you're telling me to start again? Um, so, a lot of time, I would uh, just keep doing what I know best, which is keep moving forward, but never restarting. Um, I struggle a lot with this, and I knew that um, something was wrong, so, but I just couldn't put my finger on it. Um, I was struggling and, and stuck most of the time, but creativity was supposed to be fun. I chose graphic design for the sole purpose of learning new things and exploring, but I think a lot of the beliefs that we grow up with that becomes part of our subconscious of being perfect and really um, of being perfect and doing the right thing um, and there's only one way of doing something which is what everyone else was doing it didn't really help me in my creative journey um, Uh, it always 
felt like I was fighting against my own flow. Uh, and I was never good enough. When I couldn't figure out what was wrong, I stick to what I know, and which was, again, moving forward and never restarting. Um, I stick to what I know, what worked for me, and what got me the days I want. I, was, I didn't really want to ditch my own process because I was too afraid of the outcome if I did. Um, I didn't understand at the time that um, I didn't understand at the time that to grow, you had to let go and experiment and start over and over again. I limited my thoughts, techniques, and perception. And most importantly, I limited myself from exploring my options um, and from experimenting with my resources and by how much time, energy, and opportunities I wasted doing this. But hey, no regrets. Um, no regrets whatsoever. And I was just too afraid to fail. I was literally too afraid uh, to fail that I, I just wanted to keep um, going. And I, I did what I do best, which is I kept going. But then I realized that it became my reality. I failed at becoming better, and I didn't do anything that I liked. At this moment, I thought, and I was convinced actually, that um, I wasn't good at graphic design, and graphic design wasn't for me. Um, and I think that might be also because, as a student, I thought I'd be taught how to become the best designer out there. But, no. Nope. You are on your own because you only become as good as you want to be. No one teaches you how to design. Uh, but it wasn't until I went to grad school that I started understanding what Ben meant when he said restart. I met uh, Nick Kroc, which is my studio design, my studio uh, design studio professor. Um, and on the first day, I remember his syllabus had a whole page of class rules, which said, um, "Don't take it personal, and no crying is allowed." And I thought to myself, sweet, that's exactly the type of professors I used to avoid. But anyways, I followed him to his office, and I knocked the door. I said, hi, I'm Mira, and I'd like to uh, tell you things about it. And I'm pretty sure he was weirded out. I'm 100% sure. Um, I continued, and I said, I used to avoid professors like you. I tend to stay in my comfort zone and use the same exact techniques I know uh, approaching yeah. my um, my products. I use color very well. I create amazing patterns, and I use photography as the only image making method uh, in my uh, products. I tend to stay in my comfort zone. I repeated that because that's very important. And then um, I told him I want to stop all of that, and I want to restart. And at that moment, first of all, let me tell you that it took me a lot of courage, a lot of courage to just say these words. And then at the moment, I feel so powerful and so free. I'm, I'm not resisting anymore. And I'm, I'm, I'm ready to stop, take a few steps back, and start again. Um, and that, that alone gave me, it just felt so good. But a few weeks down into the semester, uh, the perfectionist in it all started creeping in again. And I would uh, say uh, things like, this is not good, I need it to be, to be perfect, um, I can't, I don't have anything to present. But it was also this, the first time that I allowed myself to walk into class with nothing to show except my sketchbook. To talk about my process and where I got stuck. And at, stuck. And at that time, I realized that it, it was my first time that I'm talking about the problem and it was okay for me to share my problem with my classmates for critiques instead of a perfect, visually perfect artwork. Um, and, he, and Nick immediately told me that I was, it, it was because I was uh, letting my, I was thinking outcome and I was 
not letting my process inform me. But working with him that semester, I believe I I worked, I created my own process. So I didn't follow any brief that he handed to the class. I started creating my own projects, allowing myself to fail. I would come in the class with nothing's working, but I allowed myself to have it out there and trained myself to not care about what others think of my work or it being perfect. And um, I, I think, I, I say that I allowed myself to fail, but looking back at it, I think I allowed myself to find my process. Um, I was working as hard this time, but it was with intention. And I, and I allowed my, um, I'm not, I'm, Sorry, I'm resilient to my failures rather than resisting them. I'm not resisting my failures anymore. And it was, it was just funny because in, in either methods, there's a hardship that you need to face. So when I was moving forward, wanting everything to turn out perfect, I was fighting against myself. I was fighting against myself I was fighting against myself. Um, to to uh, not not to give up and and just to have an okay outcome. But when I started embracing my restarts, when I started embracing my restarts, I um, I believe that I faced and I accepted uncertainty. Even if that meant that I'm going to have a less of an okay uh, result. But I gained so much. I gained the building blocks that defined my process. I gained uh, flexibility. I gained perspective. And I embraced vulnerability. And most importantly, I let go. I think that's the one thing that I would take with me from this whole experience is um, letting go. Uh, I would try something, it didn't work, I move on to the next, it didn't work, I start with a whole different idea um, altogether. And life was perfect. Until I graduated. So, <laughs> so after graduation, I thought to myself that now I needed to know it all. And because I didn't know it all, I thought that I wasn't good enough. And people assumed that I must know it all. So I, had, I wanted to level up to that expectation and to create amazing work and, and do all of that. I wanted to have my life figured out already. Um, I came back to Saudi in September 2016 uh, with the biggest fear of leaving. I was lost. But I realized that I was in the middle of a huge transition. Transition from school to real world job, from being a student to being a service provider, from being surrounded by a creative community, my professors, my classmates, and having just that creative dialogue um, every day to being on your own. To being on your own. And it literally felt like this. It felt as small. Um, so yeah, and then the perfectionist, safe, and the master of all panic attacks, let's creep back in, um, and like, I, as if I forgot everything, what's restart, what, what to explore, and what success and succeeding are you talking about? I just wanted to see the path bright and clear. But little did I know. I found myself missing on opportunities and avoiding them. And I just kept moving forward again. Uh, thinking of an outcome, thinking about the outcome and not living the transition as a process. Um, so I decided, and okay, so early this year, and that was again one of the major restarts I've, I've went through. I, I realized that I, I'm working on projects and doing things and I'm just very swamped with a lot of things that I'm not enjoying just to keep going. I was 
I, I was too afraid to stop. I didn't want to stop because that meant that I'm failing or I'm lost or whatever. So I just kept going. I kept going until I decided that I am going to stop. It was a bold move because I literally stopped where I am. And at the moment, it wasn't fun. I thought that I'm failing again and that this was an assurance that graphic design or design and creativity is not for me. Um, but then I think I got very mad at myself that I spent so much years trying to figure out the, cre the creative myself as a creative and then now I just want to give up and say it's not for me. And so I started again. So I started again with the uh, with the goal of with different goals, wanting to um, giving myself the freedom to explore and try new things, and knowing that I ha I can restart as many times as I need. So now, so I'm not saying that I have it all figured out now and I life is perfect and all is clear. I whine about this every single day, by the way, and they know. Um, but I think letting go and um, restarting has given me the power to uh, own my failures and to um, have the courage to, to try new things. It made me respect where I am at at any, time, at any moment of life. And it also, also changed me as a person. I started seeing everything as a process, as trials and errors, and um, as work in progress. So rather than you either have it or not, you're always a work of progress. Thank you very much. Have any questions for me? Come on, guys, I can answer any question. Please don't make it hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you very much for your talk. Thanks. Um, I just have one question for you. Uh, so, how do you feel whenever you stress start? So, do you feel the same, exactly the same, or each time you, you feel a different feeling? I mean, does it get harder or easier for you? Um, actually, restarting is never easy. Never. It's even it's even harder than starting also, like from the beginning. But the thing is, you're more free when you restart. You're you're restarting because you get to a point where you know that you're free from all the constraints or whatever limits that you put for yourself. Does it feel more exhausting for you each time to restart? Uh, not really, because there is a thrill. There is a thrill of, now when you embrace the uncertainty, there is a thrill of wanting wanting to, to see what's going to come your way. It's, it's I, I just said choose your heart. It's never easy. Either way, it's never easy. You either keep going at what you do and just feel like you're dragged all the time, or you restart and see what happens.
Thank you very much for an amazing talk. Thanks. So I have a question. Um, you just mentioned, you said that uh, you place limits on yourself. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious to know why did you place these limitations on yourself? Because I wanted to feel safe. I just literally wanted to feel safe because being outside of your comfort zone doesn't feel good, doesn't feel safe, and you just keep doing the things. You keep limiting yourself to that extent where, okay, now I feel safe. So I'm going to believe all of the things that I say to myself. Uh, how do you cope with the self-doubt in your process or in your daily life? Oh. You And uh, it just, I think you just, literally it's a self-talk and training of your work in progress. And that's when I believe that I'm a work in progress. See, at the beginning of my presentation, I said it's either, it's either white or black, not nothing in the middle. But when you re realize that there's this mid middle and that's the progress that you are in, things become easier and you become more confident in your process. Uh, I have another question on coping. So you mentioned that you had a, a lot of panic attacks throughout your journey. Yes. What was your process in calming yourself down and dealing with whatever you had in front of you? Um, I think it was that when I used to have my panic attacks or like literally going crazy, um, I think I was just, I, I don't think I coped with that. I, I think it was just uh, an additional uh, burden, but I really didn't know how to cope. I just felt like this is what I have. I have a deadline. I'm not. I didn't sleep for the past two days. I'm just gonna have it, and that's it. Yeah, hi. hi. Uh, first of all, thank you for what you've been saying. To be honest, I've, I've related to some of what you're saying. I feel like I have lived an experience that's very similar to it. But what I've noticed is that half of the experience that you've been going through, half of the reason of that is because, and I want to share this with you, but at the, at the same time it's a question. So don't you think that we live inside our minds for too long? We listen to the inner chatter or the inner talks in our minds for too long. And because we do that, we start doubting ourselves. We start to question every step that we take. Don't you think that sometimes we just have to stop listening to your mind and just follow your heart? Uh, yes, but I'm not good at that. <laughs> yes, you are completely, completely right. But I am the person who, oh, I forgot to put an overthinker. Because I am an overthinker. And I just sit in that bubble of overthinking until, again, I go to that safe zone of that's what I'm going to do. Hi, hello. Um, everything is out of my comfort zone. How do I know, like, what to do exactly to restart when everything is out of your comfort zone? Um, that's a good question. I think when nothing is working, because I, I said, like, restarting is basically you um, taking a step back to see where you fall short. Like, for me, I overthink. I'm afraid of what other people think of my work. I'm never confident. So I don't, I don't, I, I, basically plan what I want to do, and that's not always good when it comes to creativity. Now, I'm talking about design as as creativity in a whole, like you have to plan your, your creative process and design, but I mean, I don't try things. So when I when I take a step back, I start realizing that well, this is what I don't do. And you just go ahead and do it. Yeah, I don't know if this answered your question, but I feel like you just need to know where you're falling short first to know how to restart. Like for example, I I used to be so consumed in making something very pretty. I don't care about this anymore now because I know that there are more important stages to get there before anyway. Thank you so much. Well, uh, there's a question here. And there. And there. So uh, you've been walking for so long and then you have this awakening <laughs> moment of Think it's wrong, so you had to fix everything. Yeah. Now we've started a new path. Um, we think every at the beginning, every new path, we think we're doing everything right. Mm -hmm. But later on, we find it's wrong. So how do we make sure that we don't 
reinvent the wheel and make the same mistakes? And why do you think, wait, like, how do we diagnose it so early on? But, um, actually, I don't know if you noticed this in my talk. I reinvented, I, I relived the week of, of thinking that now I had it all figured out and life is perfect and everything. And then when I came back to a whole new situation, everything crumpled down again in my head, in my thoughts. Um, but, but what's different is that you start realizing it even more quicker. It's a quicker process, it becomes a quicker process. But you can't speak that. You can't speak. It's just gonna happen, I think. Or at least with me, that's what happened. Uh, okay. Question there. Uh, okay. Thank you very much for your talk. Yes. And I just wanted to ask you something. So, don't you think that a big part of the problem of overthinking and being afraid to restart is just not knowing what's the worst case scenario? Yes, exactly. And that's what I said. When it's like. And the big part is uncertainty, and that's the hard part in in restarting, which is choosing to embrace the uncertainty, whatever it is that I'm going to be facing. So one time I um, I forgot her name. It's an Indian actor, actress. She had a, a talk where she said, "I take the risk and I back it 100 percent with my 100 percent," and I think that's when uncertainty and it becomes easier to just leave the overthinking and research. Thank you, Mira, for yes. having you two different things. Um, you mentioned perfection, and I remember one of my friends told me uh, that perfect is the enemy for good, or of good. Um, so thank you for having me to that. Uh, you talked about embracing vulnerability and searching for you know, think that elevates your work. And you talked about perfection again. And I wanted to know, um, how do you tap, or how do you, as a person who has high standards for work or something like that, how did you manage to elevate your standards or having realistic standards for your creative process of work to produce uh, uh, an output that sort of matches your aspirations and what you're looking for achieving? See, that's, I think that's a struggle in, a, in the business world uh, in general because you as a creative and you as a designer, you have certain standards that I always want to work to get to. But when it comes to business, you, you find yourself compromising a lot of that because there are... See, I, I consider myself as a conceptual graphic designer because I do design for people to think and see and, and have that as a tool. But at the same time, there is a mass where you need to produce for them and, and design for them. So there comes a, a lot of imperfections or compromisations in, in along the, the process. But did I answer your question? Okay. And <laughs> there's a question there. Did you hear uh, There's a question here. I just want to ask you how did you go over your overthinking because overthinking is a real struggle and um, it sometimes haunted you and you literally didn't know how to come and how to go over it. So how did you convince yourself to go over it and it's just a thought that doesn't make any sense. Uh, see, I never, never overcame overthinking. Never. It's there all the time, but it's just sometimes that you need to, I think, be hard on yourself and just do it anyways. You're still overthinking, but you're doing it anyways. You're not allowing yourself to live, again, what she said, live in your mind and just believe in that. You wanted to try something else. And sometimes it's a, it's a point of frustration. You just do it. That's it. But I'm sorry, I never gave a call for a comment. I don't have an answer.
process that you did, and every person is going to be different, but what was the process that you did to actually reach to the point where you're like, okay, now I'm like 60% into restarting mode, but I'm yes. like, yes. Okay. I think, um, and I, I was so stubborn. Literally, I was so stubborn to give up on design and because it was so easy for me to say it's not for me and go on to business or go on to whatever other major is. But I just felt like, plus, this is what I need to face. I'm going to go through it. That's one. Two, I, I, you have to be very open to others' critiques, others' feedback. You have to be vulnerable and embrace your vulnerability, meaning that, yes, this is not the best work that I have and people might not like it, but it's what it's. I, I'm there right here, at, right now. Um, accepting where you are, and again, going back to the answer um, of just observing, like being self-aware of what, where you fall short. I do a lot of math in here, so you, you just need to literally um, accept where you are, and I feel being vulnerable is, is a huge part of it. Like, not being afraid of rejection, not being afraid of, of failure, which isn't, isn't easy. I mean, I'm here, I'm standing here telling you this, but I'm pretty sure a lot of people know that it's my biggest fear. And I'm, I stop a lot of things of, I mean, I don't do an approach and, and initiate a lot of things because of that. So it's never easy. Welcome. Thank you guys. I felt like it's kind of related to me what you said as uh, I graduated last year and I felt every single moment you felt. Okay, now it's time for 30 seconds. Who would love to join the stage? Visual, where we share infographics about the most important points. 
we translate you the to you, and we share articles written for you. You can read it in two, three minutes. And we've talked about so many topics. We've talked about addiction, why you're addicted to your phone, why you're addicted to uh, anything, coffee, anything. And then we've talked about other topics about economy, why, there's, why we have banks and why we have money and all of that, and estimation, it has all So I think you can join us in this uh, vision of trying to take all the books in English, turn it to Arabic, and share it to you. So in the future, you gain knowledge. It doesn't matter whether you read it, you listen to it, or you see it, but the end you gain knowledge because it's really will know that community progress will know this process.